Hey kitty, I am preparing to teach our audiences about this exciting subject on work, force and energy. Hey friends, so without wasting much energy, let us work on understanding this topic and force ourselves to expand our knowledge about this academic subject called work, force and energy. Zoom in! Our daily lives involve numerous tasks such as cleaning the house, working at a factory or playing in the field. And all these activities include several movements that need you to push or pull objects that may react differently. Yes, these activities can either set an object in motion, shift its direction, change its shape or put that object back into the resting position. And this movement of push and pull applied on an object is called force. However, the force is different in every scenario and depends on many other elements that are divided into two categories known as contact force and non-contact force. And what are they? Well, when two or more objects come in contact with each other during the interaction, the force is called a contact force. This contact force is further divided into various types such as applied force, frictional force, normal force, etc. And some of the examples of contact force are A person pushing a huge wooden box A person skating on a rough floor stopped by the friction A table supporting a vase kept on it by exerting an upward force and much more. On the other hand, the non-contact force is the opposite of the contact force. Meaning, during a non-contact force, two objects do not come into physical contact with each other during the interaction. The main types of non-contact force are gravitational, electrostatic and magnetic. Some of the examples of non-contact force are an apple falling from a tree, a football kicked high in the air falling towards earth, an iron nail attracted to a magnet, pieces of paper attracted towards your ruler or comb when rubbed. And to understand both the forces quantitatively, the force is measured in the unit Newton. But the application of force does not end the topic. In fact, it takes us to the next step of force applied called work. When a force is applied to an object, it results in the movement of an object and when this happens, the work is said to be done. And even the work performed can differ in various forms. Yes, the work could be either positive, which means the force is in the same direction as the displacement of an object, or it could be negative, indicating the displacement of an object is opposite to the direction of the force applied. Or else, it could be zero, which means the force and displacement are perpendicular to each other. In other words, there is no displacement of an object. So, to understand the kind of work done, we calculate it using the formula work is equal to force into distance and the standard unit of measurement for work is joule. But remember my friends, in order to apply the force and perform the work, we need the ability to do it. And that ability to perform the work is known as energy. Yes, my dear friends, without energy, you won't be able to perform even the simplest task. So, it's essential to refill yourself by a regular supply of energy 
that can be obtained from the food we eat like green vegetables, fruits and nuts that gives you the required strength to perform your daily work and keeps you healthy and wise. Trivia time! Did you know the gravitational force is the one that keeps the Earth orbiting around the Sun? Also, the Earth is like one strong bar magnet which has a magnetic north and south which the needle on a compass represents too. Hope you learned something new in today's episode. Until next time, it's me, Dr. Binox, zooming out. Ah, never mind.